I got to do my first ever used oil analysis on this car and interestingly it's coming right after my first oil change since switching to Valvoline Restore and Protect. There are some alarm bells in this report but there are also some potential explanations which I'll be going through in a bit. I learned a lot through this whole exercise and I think you're going to find some of the things I'll be going through helpful as well. Now let's get this. If you're just joining us, Sky is my 2017 Honda Accord with 95,000 miles on the clock. I had switched to Valvoline Restore and Protect in a recent oil change and the oil sample sent for this analysis was taken after running Restore and Protect for an oil change interval of 4,250 miles. That was when the maintenance minder came on. With that background, let's dive into the report. First is the general comment from Blackstone Labs, sampling the oil from the filter is fine and the drain pan as well if it was clean yeah i actually forgot to catch the sample while the oil was coming out from the sump but at the same time i didn't want to miss the opportunity of running an oil analysis on this used valvoline restore and protect oil so i sent a sample anyway you mentioned using an arc oil fuel additive and those will not usually skew our tests but maybe it's the source of the manganese otherwise the manganese is probably blow by from fuel or an octane booster in terms of wear, iron is high for this engine type, indicating accelerated steel wear. The universal averages show typical wear levels after 7,200 miles. A trace of fuel is harmless. The total base number is 2.8, while the total acid number is 4.8. Check filtration in case the silicon is dirt, but it could as well be breakdown of engine sealant. Now let's take a look at the actual wear metal levels. Nothing remarkable when it comes to aluminum. We have 7 parts per million compared to the universal average of 6. Elevated aluminum is going to indicate piston wear. Chromium is 0 and that's good news. Chromium is a metal you would normally find if there's piston ring wear. And then we move on to iron which is the first alarm bell and we have 33 parts per million which is way above the universal average of 11 for this engine type. This is signifying some accelerated cylinder bore or valve train wear. However I did some research Research and found out that the arc oil additive which I was using in aliquots in every fill up for around 3000 miles of the 4250 oil change interval contains a compound called ferrocene and the breakdown of ferrocene releases around 37% of elemental ion and so Claude AI has actually dismissed this high ion level as he thinks it will be coming from the arc oil additive. However I also remember that I only just changed the timing chain tensioner on this car and the defective timing chain tensioner was causing a cold start rattle which could be a potential source of iron coming from timing chain wear. Next we have copper, lead and tin which all read zero indicating that there's no wear on the bearings. We then have molybdenum or moly which I'm going to say isn't remarkable considering that the 0W20 Restore and Protect has around 156 parts per million in its virgin state. Manganese is abnormally high and again Blackstone thinks that it could be from the arc oil additive but it may also be coming from wear in the valve guides considering the history of prolonged cold start rattles. Silicon is quite high in this report compared to the universal average and I know exactly where this is coming from. This is how the piston crowns on this engine used to look. All this brownish stuff are impurities from the poor quality gas that I was using at the time and I'm definitely sure it's high in silica or silicon. Now since switching to a much better gas station, the brownish stuff is mostly gone though some of it would have found its way into the oil contributing to the high silicon count. There's not so much going on with the rest of the additive package section. Total base number is 2.8 which is around the lower limit of normal. The total base number is a measure of the oil's ability to resist breakdown and the formation of acids. Keep in mind that 0W20 restore and protect out of the bottom has a TBN of about 6.7 so the number would reduce with mileage. It's good to know that there's no fuel dilution on this engine with only trace amounts of gas found in the oil. Either way it's less than the limit of 2. Also with no coolant in the oil that tells me there's no head gasket leak which is good. The level of insolubles of 0.4 is also good showing that the pyrolator boss filter is working well. This value would have been much higher if it had gotten 
oxygen clogged and the bypass valve was triggered. The total acid number is high at 4.8, especially when considered with the total base number of 2.8. Higher levels of acid in the oil would lead to engine wear and during this oil change I actually realized that because I've been following the maintenance minder and changing the oil around 4,500 miles, I didn't really keep a tab on the time duration of the oil change interval. This meant that I drove this oil for over 8 months. Going forward, irrespective of mileage, I won't be going past 6 months on any oil and with these baseline results, I'll be doing serial analysis anyway, probably the first one at 2,000 miles and see what I get from there. That's going to dictate when I change this oil. Also, since this is the first oil analysis since switching to Valvoline Restore and Protect, the residual old oil in the engine would have played a role in skewing some of these findings. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe if you've loved this and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.